From the mysteries of the deep to the power of human innovation, the future of our oceans is in our hands. Together, we can protect the oceans that sustain us all. Join me on a journey of discovery, innovation, and change. Let's create a future where our oceans are safe, healthy, and harmonious. This is Harmonious Oceans. What's up, ocean lovers? Welcome back to Harmonious Oceans. Today, we're exploring the ninth letter U, unveiling renewable resource potential. If you're passionate about our oceans and want to know how we can protect them, you're in the right place. But first, let's break down why renewable energy is so important, how marine energy can be our secret weapon, and what we as the next generation can do to make a real impact. Let's get into it. So, why should we care about renewable resources? Well, it's pretty simple. Traditional energy sources like coal, oil and gas are the biggest culprits behind global climate change, making up over 75% of greenhouse gas emissions. These fossil fuels are messing up with our atmosphere and our oceans, leading to issues like acidification and coral bleaching, which we talk more about in the first episode, so go check that out if you haven't already. That's why switching to renewable energy is such a big deal. It's not just about being eco-friendly, it's about making sure we still have a planet to live on. Here's a quick overview. Environmental benefits. Renewable energy sources like wind and solar don't pump out harmful greenhouse gases. That means cleaner air for us and healthier oceans for marine life. Energy independence. Renewable energy is everywhere, literally. By tapping into local sources, we can reduce our dependence on imported fossil fuels. That's better for our national security and our wallets. Health benefits. Clean energy means less air pollution, which means fewer health problems. We're talking about saving lives and billions in healthcare costs. How amazing is that? Bottom line, renewable energy isn't just a buzzword. It's our ticket to a sustainable, thriving future. Here's a chat I had with Sasha Ermelova, who is a year two student at Columbia University. She's studying material science and engineering. She's very passionate about solving climate change and problems with materials and AI. Actually, well, in my opinion, engineers play one of the most fundamental and one of the most like first level, um, first level roles in the whole renewable energy energy industry because engineers are the ones creating technologies for renewable energy engineers are the ones identifying what flaws the current engineers and scientists are yeah. are the ones identifying what are the current the flaws of the current systems are and the goal of the engineers is to actually invent the technology and to improve the existing systems and technologies so engineers play the most fundamental role so if you look at the if you look at the whole kind of climate change uh, thing yeah. uh, and sustainability as like a pyramid, engineers are like in the first level. And following on from that, uh, the world governments today are giving a lot of incentive and subsidies to lean on renewable resources. Um, but to reach the target of net zero emissions by 2050, we require more than just incentives. And as you said, technologies, engineers will have to make new technologies. So are there any current or emerging technologies that could take us one step forward? Well, I would say that uh, most of the technologies they can take, that can take, uh, they can take us closer to a like, more sustainable and net zero world yeah. are like, they already exist. The problem is not that technologies don't exist. There are technologies that exist. For example, there are heat pumps, which there are heat pumps, which are totally like, net zero technologies they are they don't produce like any greenhouse gases um then there are for example systems of passing cooling uh they're harder to implement but uh they still exist and yeah passive cooling is actually really interesting because uh this is more like architecture problem because uh, architects design like buildings which can be which can be cooled passively and they don't need ACs. uh acs and like for example here, yes, we probably if like we redesign most of our buildings uh to be passively cooled. 
uh, this will give a huge like lift in the um, in the greenhouse gas emissions like to the better side. And I think one of the biggest technologies, in my opinion, which can take renewable energy to the next level is fusion, fusion, uh, fusion uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, it's like totally, it's like, well, this technology is actually like not developed like, at all. I mean, yeah. uh, if like we have like wind turbines, we have solar cells. I actually myself worked on solar cells uh, a while ago. I did them in a lab when I was in high school, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I worked on them. So they, they, so even like a person who like, I don't know, a high school was 15, a 15 year old can make them in like a lab setting. Yeah. So, so yeah, all this exists. Fusion is a different story. Fusion energy doesn't like, there are no like, uh, there are no, um, there are no kind of working prototypes of this thing. So yeah, I think if we actually want to, like go to the net zero, go to net zero uh, in yeah. renewable energy. Like fusion energy is like the best way to go. And here like engineers is like where like now most of the engineers need their, um, yeah, this is a place where the help of engineers and like scientists and everyone is like needed the most. Over um, and lastly, what advice would you give to fellow students and young people who want to contribute to sustainability through engineering and science? I think the main thing for students to do now uh, is to just like keep exploring. This is like the number one advice. So I personally, so, okay, I'll start like with my story. Uh, so when I was a junior high school, I joined uh, this program, which is called the Knowledge Society. This is like a big online program. It's not online, it has personal locations, but I did it online. Uh, it's an online program where they teach you about uh, different technologies and how these technologies can be applied to world's biggest problems. And a lot of people, and this is like, I think in my opinion, was like the biggest kind of accelerator of, of my kind of interest in engineering and science because they're, uh, uh, so how our, how our whole program worked. Every week you were given one uh, technology and like one series of resources to explore this technology. So I think our first one, first week was AI. So you had, we had like a bunch of videos, a bunch of articles to read, to just like know what AI is and where it is applied. Then we had blockchain, then we had like nanotech. We had like also like material science. Yeah. Uh, we had like, I don't know, like autonomous vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, like ev wow. literally like, everything you can imagine and you yeah. just like learn about it they, you're given a, a just like a series of resources on every topic and throughout kind of exploring this like exploration process you find something what like you like and you choose like one topic and you start like going deeper into it and this is kind of what inspired my interest in material science uh and yeah i think and I think like, and I'm really grateful to the program because I like got exposure of like everything and I chose like one that I'm like particularly enjoying now. So uh, yeah, so leading to like advice, I think just like if like you don't know what to, do, like if you know that you want to do engineering and you want to do science and you want to like apply to um, like solve like big problems, but you don't know what, uh, yeah. just like, I don't know, just take, uh, just like research what technologies exist and like take like a week to study, like take a week for each one to study it. Like okay. read, um, watch videos, just like go deep and see what interests you to find like that kind of one thing uh, that you will like. So this is like my number, number one piece of advice. Um, and the second one is also comes from the knowledge society, the like deep, yes, what I did. Uh, it's like, like it's called like building projects. So it doesn't matter if you're in high school or you're in college, just like building is important. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you're interested, I don't know, like me in material science, um, yes, try building something. So what I did back in high school, I like, I don't know, I, re I was, re I remember I was researching sustainable packaging. I was researching uh, bioplastics. I was researching how I can make, uh, yeah, plastics more uh, sustainable. 
and I had a research idea uh, how we can make like biodegradable packaging more uh, how it can make biodegradable packaging to to preserve food better when it's like wrapped in it so yeah by adding like by adding essential oils to it so this was the idea i just like read it somewhere i just like well some other essential oils have this antimicrobial properties mm-hmm. and they can be added to like yeah bioplastics and i just reached out to a local lab i just reached out to a local lab in moscow and i was like hello so i have this idea you can like read my whole idea like in this doc and like i don't know i'm a high school junior and i really want to test it out so if you could like help me i would like really appreciate it and yeah they responded they gave me a supervisor led me to the lab and we did the experiments we wrote the research paper together uh it was a year ago so i don't know whether it's published already or not because publications take a lot of time Um, so yeah like build something don't be afraid to reach out to like experts or like labs or different like other facilities you need if you're in high school they will like a lot of them will actually be willing to help you sasha dropped some serious information right now let's dig into something that's super underrated marine energy abundance think about it the world has miles and miles of coastlines just waiting to be tapped for marine energy this resource is everywhere and it's renewable so we're never going to run out Predictability. Unlike wind and solar, which can be a bit unpredictable, marine energy is super reliable. Tides and currents follow natural rhythms, so we always know where and when to get that energy. Resilience. Marine energy systems can be placed close to where power is needed, which means less reliance on long transmission lines. That's great for reliability of our power grids. Remote power. For coastal and island communities, Marine energy can be a game changer. It can provide vital power to places that are hard to reach with traditional energy sources. All right, while wave energy does sound pretty awesome, it doesn't come without its downsides. Environmental effects. Since wave energy tech is still pretty new, we're not entirely sure what its large scale impact on the environment might be. Setting up plants and power lines on shores could mess with marine life and ecosystems, And honestly, it might not look great on our beaches either. There's also the risk of increased coastal erosion and disrupting local fishing areas. More research is definitely needed to figure this out. High costs. Wave energy is still in the early stages, so it's not cheap. Right now, these projects are mostly funded by research grants and the costs are pretty high. Maintenance is also expensive because the equipment has to withstand constant rough ocean conditions. The potential is there, but until it's more developed, the costs will stay up. Hard to scale. The biggest issue right now is that wave energy systems aren't big enough to provide a significant amount of electricity. Even though there have been some tests in places like Scotland and Hawaii, the output is still pretty small. The industry needs more time funding and research to really scale up and make wave energy a major player. In short, wave energy has huge potential, but we need to tackle these challenges to make it a real contender in the renewable energy game. But marine energy isn't the only exciting development out there. There are some really cool emerging technologies that could change the way we think about energy altogether. Floating solar power. Imagine solar panels, but on water. This not only saves land space, but also increases energy efficiency. China's got a massive 150 megawatt floating solar power plant that's leading the way. So, what does this all mean for us? What can we as the next generation do to make sure our oceans stay clean and our planet stays healthy? Educate and advocate. Start by learning everything you can about renewable energy and then spread the word. Talk to your friends, family, and even your community about why this matters. Support sustainable products. Make conscious choices. Buy from companies that prioritize sustainability and use renewable energy in their operations. Reduce carbon footprint. Small changes can make a big impact. Use public transport. Reduce plastic use and conserve water. Every little counts. Get involved. Join or start an environmental club at your school or in your community. 
participate in cleanup drives, awareness campaigns, or even initiate projects that focus on sustainability. So, there you have it. We've got the power to create a harmonious future for our oceans and our planet. By embracing renewable resources and taking action now, we're securing a sustainable future for ourselves and the generations to come. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, every small step counts in our journey to protect our blue planet. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Harmonious Oceans for more episodes on how we can make a positive impact on our environment.